Hi and welcome. I know a lot of you love my air dry clay projects and so of course I have my clay with me today and I have another air dry clay project. It's one that a lovely viewer asked me to do. She wanted to make some tall, thin, quirky vases and wondered how to go about making them. So it's a really simple, quick and easy way to make these tall, thin vases and I'm sure you'll want to make lots of them once you get going. So. Off we go with the clay and come and see. I know that you're really going to enjoy this one with me. Here I have just a small handful of air dry clay and I'm simply just going to condition the clay and mould it together. The clay should be lovely and soft and really nice to work with. My preference is DAS air dry clay. I'll show you the dimensions in a moment. It's always handy to have a little bowl of water while we're working with our air dry clay. We're simply going to roll this little log into a slightly longer log. Just smooth out any sections as you go with just a little bit of water as I did then. And so nice even pressure down on your clay and Bring your fingers from the middle to the out, then you should get a nice cylindrical shape. It's easier to work with if we have the edges quite flattened off. You can either smooth these off or as I do here, just slice them off. These little vases can be absolutely any size and shape you wish, but if you'd like to follow this one, I'll just show you my dimensions. So here you can see I have 111 grams of the air dry clay and it's approximately 14 centimetres long and approximately 2.5 centimetres in diameter. For this next step you'll need a piece of dowel like this or you could use a pencil, a chopstick or anything which is quite similar. And what we need to do is insert it into the bottom here and we want it to travel all the way through the very centre of the clay and so I twist it as I go make sure you don't put too many big finger marks in there and that's why if you turn it a bit and then you can gradually feel it till it comes through at the top there right in the centre if you can might take a little bit of practice it's a bit like skewering a kebab so here's a really fun bit, we're going to use that piece of dowel or your chopstick or pencil or whatever cylindrical item you have and we're using that as a little rolling pin and as you can see if we apply even gentle pressure and roll it towards us we're using that as a mini rolling pin right inside the clay there just like that as you see so apply nice even pressure and gradually it just makes the gap and the hole throughout larger. As you can see we want it about that thickness that we have there so the clay becomes about that thickness. Really quite clever isn't it? So go nice and gently and even up your shape if you need to but I'd like mine slightly thinner at the top so I've left it with a bit more room and I'm simply going to just shape it to make it into a slightly tapered shape at the top leaving it a bit wider at the bottom. But you just choose how you'd like yours to be. Hopefully the outside is nice and smooth after having your little roller in there but you can just add a little bit of water on your finger and smooth it out if you need to and I'd quite like mine with a slightly bent shape and you can do it as bent or as straight as you like and you just use something to hold it in place like this but I think I'll do this one not too bent and so they do stand up on their own just like that and then you want to leave them to dry. Here are two more that I made on a slightly more rustic side but what is quite nice is if you add two of them together and you sort of like push them into each other so they become one and then you want to just hold them up against something on the side. I changed that for my jar here as it's the right height and you can also add something in to give a bit of structure on the inside. 
I then just leave them to dry to firm up for a little bit so this one has firmed up nicely and I can hold it without it bending all over the place. And so once we get to this stage we want to have a little bit of extra of your air dry clay and we're going to make the base of the vase. Because I dried it up on the base, the base is actually still a little bit damp so I've added just a little bit of water or you could add a bit of air dry clay slip and then I'm simply adding some fresh clay to the bottom and moulding this on. If you want to add the base on while the whole thing is still wet and you're, you can do that then most definitely do. I just think it's easier to hold on to the little bud vase when it's actually not fully wet. And so we smooth out the bottom with a bit of water and then we leave it to dry once again. These ones are dry now and as I said they're a little bit more rustic and if you don't want them so rustic what we can do is add in some of those gaps there, we can just add in a little bit more clay and so I just add a bit of water and then I'm going to blend some of the fresh clay onto the dry clay and it attaches that way if you add the water. Not adding loads of water, just a little bit of water because as the two of these sat together they kind of sank a little bit and we got a bit of a dimple at the bottom. You might like that look but if you don't and you want to fill it in then by all means you can fill that in. Once you've had a go at making these you can make absolutely any shape you like and make them into lots of different little characters. Whether that one there it could be a little whale, a fish, a mermaid tail, a cat, let's see what I turn it into at the end. And you can of course add lots of other details to these. You can roll out a long coil and then make these into little handles for them. That would look really quite cute. When adding two bits of wet clay together, as I've done before in my other tutorials, just use something to scratch and score both edges, add a little bit of clay slip in between and attach these. This is just the one that I've made just now and so is a little bit wet. Maybe I might be better leaving this one until it's dried a little. So I've done that and I've rolled my little handles a little bit thinner actually and cut them out again. Also rolled out a really thin coil of air dry clay and we just add a little bit of slip or water and then take a knife or a tool and you just want to blend this thin coil of clay into the two sections so we get a nice neat join. Just spend your time and take a little time there. I've actually got a bit of a thick coil so I'm just going to roll that a little thinner for the next three. A nice soft paintbrush is really handy now. Just dip it in your water and just blend out the join and really get it quite seamless if you want to and if you can. But don't worry too much. So just as a recap, I actually let the main body of the vase here dry just for a few hours along with the handles and then attach them on like this. And then I stood them up and let them dry and you can do so many different shapes, they really are great fun. Then once they are fully dry, take the finest of sandpapers, take them outside and just give them a light sand. At this stage, if you want to add a sealant you can, if you want to add gesso you can. I just find with gesso it leaves some brush marks behind. So here I'm just going in with my white acrylic paint and just a little bit of water to thin it down so that it absorbs slightly into the clay. But you can seal them first with something else if you prefer, as sometimes I use an acrylic medium to do this. This one's going to be a white base, so I'm painting it first with white, but I've got a few that I'd like to make grey first, so instead of going in with white, I'm going in with two or three coats of grey base coat, which is just grey acrylic paint. Then I have some which will be green and some orange, so I'll do that as their base coat. 
Even though acrylic paint dries really quite quickly, you want to leave it to dry for much longer than you think, otherwise the paint will start to lift off of the clay. So the trick there is to just make sure you dry it really, really well. Leave it for much longer than you think, and then you will be able to touch it with your fingers. I'm holding it here at the top and the bottom just to help with this and just make sure you don't touch the acrylic paint with sticky fingers otherwise it lifts a bit like that and I touched it before it was um, absolutely dry and so the paint did start to lift a little bit so as I say just make sure it's fully fully dry and then you will be able to hold it. And so I've started to add my little details now, I've just got some green acrylic paint and a really fine paintbrush. I have paintbrushes in zero, double zero and triple zero and they're really handy for doing this kind of project. I've let this dry fully now and I can move on and paint the back side of it so that I can hold on to the already painted bit. So just make sure that you add a lid or some cling film, as I have done here, to your paint to make sure it doesn't dry out in between. This is just a really simple little cute leaf pattern. And just to make it a little bit quirky, I've left a little oval here and I'll add a little cute face in between there. So search around and see what kind of design you'd like to paint on yours. You can do loads of different designs and come up with something either contemporary, quirky, traditional, absolutely anything. It's up to you. So many choices and I hope you do enjoy mine. If you'd like to copy mine, you're more than welcome to. And I think they've been a really lot of fun, these little bud vases. So you obviously don't want to put any water in there, they're for dried flowers, but they're really cute bud vases. And once you've made one, I'm sure you'll make, like to make lots more. Once you've completely painted them, just make sure you let them dry really well. And then you can go in with a top coat. I like to use a spray lacquer, so I'll use that and I'll do two or three light coats all over with this. Or you could use anything else of your choice. I hope you really enjoyed that. I love everything to do with air dry clay projects. And if you have any questions, please comment below. And if you have any suggestions for anything you'd like to see me make, also please comment below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye for now.